Well, here we are on Friday morning once again. Doesn't time fly, Pat, when you're having fun? Absolutely, you find that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It seems uh, like about a minute ago we were talking on Monday. Uh, and, and you're finding right. lockdown okay, are you, to live with? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting going to do it. I'm actually quite... In, I hate to use the term with quite enjoying it. I'm a bit like you, which is a worry. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Big back okay, that. Um, right. hey, by the way, here's a quick thing before we go on. Here's a book. I hope you can read it. I was sent that uh, by a woman called Mar Mar Marie Therese Rogers Maloney. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, I, I was reminded of a good, uh, here, here's a quick question before we even start. I don't know if you've seen it on Wednesday night. It was about illegal adoptions in the Republic of Ireland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people from Northern Ireland. But it was an unbelievable story. Dude, we have had a track record on things like this. It's a very, very strange. This woman here, let me give you a quick synopsis of her story. She was um, born in Belfast. Turned out her mother was from Donegal. Uh, she was denied all sorts of um, acknowledgement and uh, details. She was kept in an orphanage since she was 16. Absolutely, and this is not an exaggeration, treated like a slave, on her knees, morning scrubbing floors and all this sort of stuff. And you know, you think this is the Kenyan that it refers to the 1800s. It's not, it's, it was going on in the 60s and 70s and so on. And you know, I think the legacy of all this has totally destroyed the Catholic Church in the eyes of many people. What's your opinion? Well, I, I think it has gone some way to doing that. Um, the only thing I would say is that that, that, that attitude towards, uh, was this a young woman that had a child? Yeah. Yeah. No, this woman, by the way, hold on, let me, no, let me explain. The, the fact, this woman's slightly different. This woman apparently had been married, the, 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 this woman's mother. Uh, and she was from Donegal. She was a successful businesswoman. Her husband died, and she had an affair with somebody. And if, uh, apparently, the suggestion in the books was be, uh, in, when her husband's and her husband's will, it was uh, stated that uh, should she remarry, all, all her claims to his property and was was null and void. I, I I don't think legally that would stand now, but apparently it must have been able to stand it. So she couldn't marry because she was sort of tied in. So she had an affair and had a child, and she was a respectable woman from South Donegal. So she gave up her child to the orphanage in Belfast. You see, that uh, is terrible. Uh, the, the Catholic Church was so concerned with rules then, and still is yeah. to some extent, actually, uh, in terms of, you know, here are the rules, you follow the rules. If you don't, yeah. you've had it, you know, you're damned. Yeah. Uh, no, just two, was, there were two right things. Yeah, there's two things. I just finished reading that book yesterday and I've, I watched the program on Wednesday night and they were on the top of my head. Anyway, that's enough, dude. I was just, I just yeah, threw it at yeah. you see what your reaction was. Oh, yeah. it's, it's it's really depressing and extreme. I, I, yeah. I would take it further, though, and I know people say I'm trying to get, well, you would probably say it away because you, you like saying bad things about me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that that it was a, a, as a piece with the entire attitudes then. You know, it wasn't that the yeah. Catholic Church was going out on its own and giving these young people, these young women a bad time. The, yeah. the, most of the society said, ah, well, she's only a slut anyway, you know? That, yeah. that would have been the unspoken sentiment, I think. Is that an exaggeration? Yeah. No, my, my where, I, where I diverge from you is, you know, what came first, the hen or the eggs? Uh, it was the uh, churches, uh, you know, uh, they, they set the parameters yes, for right society. Probably. And I don't think society set the parameters for the uh, church. You're probably right there. You're probably right there. I accept that. Okay, yeah. let's right. move from depressing stuff to even more depressing, depressing stuff. stuff. Well, we look at what's in the news and in the newspapers uh, this week. Uh, and we're going to start nice and near to you, Pat, because you, how are you from the yeah. border? You're in Donegal. But I, I, I'm, I'm literally five minutes from the border. Literally. Not walking or running or? All in the car. And I, I, I suppose flies. Uh, I, I, walking would be about 10, 15 minutes. Good heavens. Anyway, so this will be a real interest to you. Yeah. And it's from the Derry News. Is the Derry News an online site or is it a newspaper? No, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a physical paper as well. Newspaper also? God, there's a lot of newspapers yeah. about Derry now. But anyway, yeah. the, the headline is Minister warns Ulster University is dependent on funding from my department. Now, yeah. uh, give you a, a test of your general knowledge. Who said that? Ulster University yeah, 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 and by the way, this is not a new story, Jude. I damn dodds. Yeah, and it's one of the rarest, rarest things you'll ever come across, Jude. She, she is the minister, economics minister, as far as I remember. Some uh, and uh, anyway, about three or four weeks ago, uh, and this is an, an, another iteration of that story. 
she sort of warned um, the authorities at Ulster University about uh, distributing uh, courses to other schools and warned that Coleraine needed to be looked after. So here's a minister directly interfering in the running of a university for the benefit of one side of the community. She basically warned um, the, the authorities at the UU about uh, putting courses to McGee College. Well, Jim, well, Pat, he, Pat, a, lo Pat, a lot of people... Sorry, Jude. Go ahead, you finish. Sorry, sorry. No, no. When you consider this, Jude, uh, the original... Everybody thinks that the troubles, the, the starting point for the troubles was October 5th, 1968. That was the catalyst. Actually, Jude, it wasn't. It was the university campaign that absolute in 1966, which radicalised Derry. It was so blatant the decision to give the second university in Northern Ireland, not to Catholic Derry, the second city, but a wee market town in the middle of nowhere, Coleraine. It was as bigoted and as sectarian, and, and, and everyone uh, with any sort of fair mindedness accepts that. Now, Jude, that's the background. And now, for a DUP minister, now, Jude, they were talking new, new decade, new approach was a sort of deal was signed whereby it was agreed that uh, Derry we would try and get McGee up to 10,000 pupils. Uh, they have uh, uh, quite recently it was announced that a medical course is to start in Derry. Now, there's about 4,400 or something in Derry at the moment. I think that's right. And, you know, and it needs another 6,000 to get them to be a real, you know. So this is only the start of it, Jude. And one other point only, uh, the, the, the odds was talking about uh, equity in terms of fairness, yes. uh, treatment of it. Jude, there's 355 administrative jobs in Coleraine. Guess how many there are in Derry? Just oh, over yeah. 100. So in other words, equity. The, the real All the investment has gone into Coleraine. There's more academic staff. There's more buildings. The equipment is better. And, all, and the equity. If Derry got equity, we'd be delighted. Well, you know, there are people who would uh, rejoice in the fact that Derry didn't have as many uh, managers because the managers are a pain in the bum. Uh, 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 but but uh, are, you, are they there? Those are, those are good. Those are good paying jobs and for a local economy, which may helps in housing, which will help in infrastructure and all that. 255 well-paying jobs in Derry City would be very welcome. Well, here, here's one for you, Pat. Put yourself in Dan Dodd's shoes or, or anybody from the DUP. If they were to move, say there was management jobs, just talk about that for a moment, from yes. half of those management jobs to Derry, say. Don't you think there would be an uproar? There'd be an outcry in Coleraine about Jude, Jude, she's not she's not the MP for Coleraine. She's basically Jude, she's basically uh, I don't know whether you could even say it's, it's subtle threatening. She's she's actually used the word you you people are dependent on funding from my department and you better keep me informed of what's going on here. I know now, but that, that, answer, that's as blatant as that. Answer my question. What do you think? If she was yeah. to remove or or whoever is responsible was to remove uh, say half of the 350 administrative jobs from Coleraine to Derry. What would they? What would be, what would be the response among the people around Coleraine? Oh, they'd be outraged, absolutely. But so, they, what politician you, is going uh, to do something uh, they know is going to get them in the job, in the they under jobs from uh, um, what, what does it say? Uh, don't give them to somewhere else. Then what's that going to do with it? You know, with, uh, you know, with respect. Yeah, uh, surely it should be that university authorities doing what they think is best for the development of the university, best for the, the education of the people as a whole in Northern Ireland. And it shouldn't be a minister from a... She's not the minister for education. Surely it should be the minister for education who uh, should be uh, uh, making these sort of comments. Well, well, well Pat, Pat, what you're really complaining to, and it would be mine too, actually, is uh, the fact that there's such an imbalance between the shoring up of Coleraine and the sort of ignoring of agreements with new, new decade, new approach to yeah. bump up Derry to 10,000 people. But yeah. I'm saying even whoever makes the decision, if they did take the management jobs as a, yeah. kind of a, a weather vane, if they were to move half of those to Derry, there would be a huge outcry and they really yeah. would feel ill done by. It. And they would feel it, they would see, I bet you people in Coleraine would say, that's a sectarian move. You're taking yeah. our livelihoods from us and you're putting it down to Derry. You don't think that yeah. would be what they'd say? Yeah, yeah but Jude, you know, uh, she, I, I think she used some of the term. I have to make it clear there that this is a multi-campus university and there has to be equity of treatment. That's right. That's the word Jude, you used, equity. Something along those lines. I, yeah. I thought I remembered reading that. Right, Jude. If she applies that, Derry will be delighted. Absolutely <laughs> delighted. 
you know, let her own words because the unfair treatment that has been meted out to McGee for so many years, uh, Jude, it's not my opinion, it's factually correct. The number of courses, Garvin Downey uh, uh, is a well-known local figure here in Derry, and he's been leading the campaign to, for the university to go independent, uh, that Derry should set up an independent university aligned to the republics, you know, uh, and so on. Now, he's got um, he's got a fair degree of support and got a bit of a head of steam. I, I think this is what brought this on. Uh, from the, the the EU authorities, they were scared, scared that it was getting uh, that Garvin's campaign, and uh, well, he's not on his own, but uh, we'll stick to him. That there was gathering ahead of steam, and it was getting support from politicians in the south. So I think they've decided to head off in the past by by agreeing this. Mm -hmm. But you, Derry is there's more than a hundred thousand people in Derry. It's the second city. It's got the it's got the hind tit as regards education, third level education. And for you know, for now the DUP to interfere in this way, I I, I think it's actually bordering on sectarianism. I well, I, I well, I, I I don't I wouldn't I don't think I call it sectarianism. I'd say it's self interest. I think let's be honest. If Diane Dodds and the DUP are opposed to the development of Derry as a university, right? And if you yeah. say Derry has people like Garvin Downey working to try to develop an independent cross-border university. Yeah. That's like, if Diane Dodds or the DUP was to support that, that's the proverbial turkeys voting for Christmas. No, I didn't say they had any support. What, what, what happened is that uh, Garvin has met, I think uh, possibly the Minister for Education, I know he's met educationalists yeah. uh, 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 and down south. And, and I do know that uh, quite a few people have quietly come on board to support it. You know, uh, senior, you know, influential uh, people in the South. And it, it could, you know, um, like the Southern government uh, has done a lot to help out in the government. I think it was 17 million uh, uh, donation yeah. quite recently in recent years. They've also helped uh, funding for the Derry Airport. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, without question, McGee College and Letterkenny Regional College, which apparently is on, on the verge of getting university status. The two of them could easily work together, okay. creating a corridor, corridor mm -hmm. between north and south, like Derry Letterkenny's 20 minute drive. Yeah, I, I, th I think you're absolutely right, Pat, and I would support that completely. In fact, when I was teaching, I used to, we used to have an out centre in Derry, in McGee, and uh, uh, the, about, I'd say about half the class was from Donegal. It's yeah. a natural kind of a thing to happen. You know, that I'm not sure students or, 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 or my wife is from Karen Donna and she and he's showing good and he's showing the natural hunterland is not Donegal, the natural mm -hmm. hunterland is there. People and, and Derek don't think twice of going to uh, Moval or Quigley's Point or Muff or Bridge yeah. End. It's just you know, you, you just drive out the road and you're in Donegal. It's not, it's, you know, it's not, uh, I agree, you know, I, but that's the very thing that worries unionism because yeah. they would see. Supposing you had, supposing Garvin Downey's a campaign or people like yeah. him was successful and you had yeah. a thriving cross-border university, would yeah. that weaken or would that strengthen unionism? Oh, that's also a question that the unionists would say. It's sure, unionists, as, as, as a sort of, what would you say, a victim sort of politics. Anything that, uh, I know it's zero sum, anything that the other side gets weakens us. But they're right. That's the point. Of course, you're right in that one. Because it's right. a, a, no way. It's an artificially created know, uh, majority. Know, know, and anything that sticks away from that majority, see if it was a natural majority, I'd, I'd be self, you know, uh, you know falling. Uh, every time it's taken away, I would be like, what are going to do well? But it doesn't happen like that yeah. because it's artificial. Yeah, I, I think that's at the heart of the problem, really. Yeah. Is that you have an artificial state, state let, state in. Yeah. And as a result, you have to do all sorts of extraordinary things. Uh, which, yeah. on the face of it, yeah, you have to go away for these gym gymnastics. To, you nearly have to bend over backwards and then <laughs> jump up in the air to keep yeah. this going. Yeah. But mind you, uh, he who pays the piper, if she, who is the Minister for, oh, the Minister for Education is another DUP person, right? I can't even remember off the top of my head. Peter Weir. Peter Weir, Weir, Weir. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. you see, if they have the purse strings, they can stop that happening. And if they right. see it as something that's a threat, essentially a threat to the validity of uh, Northern Ireland, yeah. they're going to uh, resist it might and main. And uh, she, 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 uh, she, she said, she said, she, uh, the guy, I think his name's Bartholomew, the university chief. She says she's made it clear to him that his funding is dependent on her department <laughs> and he had better play ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's on the I record. Say, I'm not making that up. 
No, no I, it's it's um, it's actually self-inflicted wounds because every time what Diane do you mean? Dodge what do you mean? What do you mean by that? I mean that every time Diane Dodge or somebody like that comes out and makes it what is a bald statement of you know threats to people yeah. who do anything that would damage their little fiefdom, uh, they show their they show their hand. They reveal yeah. to themselves the kind of people they are or the way they conduct politics. And yeah. that only strengthens, I would have thought, that would have strengthened the nationalist and Republican vote. Absolutely. If you're a nationalist Republican, you say, what the hell's the point in trying to deal with these people? Let's work towards yeah. a united Ireland, whether they like it or not. Yeah. And the Good Friday yeah. Agreement allows us, if enough of us wanted, to have a united Ireland. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, uh, re recent events have done nothing to change that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Let, let's go on. That's a subject we go on at some length. Uh, Diane Dodds yeah. is um, sort of, I think she's sort of working at a disadvantage from the start. And that is that every time you see, I see Diane Dodds, I think of Nigel Dodds. Uh, <laughs> That's a serious I think disadvantage. I, 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 <laughs> okay. I how, did, how did you get the job, Diane? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. Irish Times. Uh, the Irish Times has a story on Brexit. And of course, it's this story about the EU threatening legal action because yeah. Boris Johnson has decided unilaterally he's going to postpone the full implementation of the protocol in terms of goods coming from GB to NEI. So yeah. um, do you think he's right? Or what the, no, better question. What should the response of the EU be? Should they take legal action? Absolutely, dude, Jesus, it's not even, dude, if I make a deal with you to buy your car, and, and uh, you know what I'm saying, by the way, uh, uh, a couple of weeks, and by the way, I'm taking out the back seats, you'll be going, wait a minute, hold on, that's not the deal I made with you. Uh, I was buying the car, and now uh, I'm, uh, you're telling me you're taking out the back seats or taking off the wing mirrors and keeping them. Dude, when you make a deal, you stick with it. The British government made a deal with the EU that here's a, a protocol, and we and, and well, unless there's some a major sort of, uh, we will stick by it. And there's going to and the clear implication of the act, of the agreement was said there'd be no unilateral moves unless in dire circumstances. The British government didn't even tell the EU they were going to do it. Made no announcement of it. Didn't and they were. Um, Boris Johnson was talking, I think, on Tuesday to Michal Martin about this, uh, the, the 2030 World Cup, mm -hmm. and he never even Got mentioned mention it. it. Uh, and uh, what do you call him, guy? Stefanovic, I can't remember his name, the EU interlocutor, or whatever you like yeah. to call this guy, or uh, negotiator. And he was chatting to Lord Frost on, I think, Tuesday, and Frost never mentioned it to him. Dude, that's, that's just twice the British government have broken uh, international. By the way, dude, the hypocrisy. And the double standards of both the DUP and the British government. When um, remember what about a month ago when uh, the EU threatened to stop the, the transfer of um, AstraZeneca uh, vaccines through the north or through yeah. the Republic into the north, uh, and uh, it was stopped. Michal Martin got on to uh, Ursula van der Leyen, and it was stopped. But the unionists went bananas that this was bad faith, and it showed how the Northern Ireland was being treated. Arlene Foster has now just switched and saying, "Oh, when the British government do it, it's hundred percent right." In fact, we we you know we were in all of it, and they went bananas about one threatening to do it. Now they're supporting yeah. one doing it. Yeah, so no the hypocrisy there. And, that, and, and the dishonesty and it's and it's downright lacking in integrity. You uh, can't have one and not the other. Uh, but Pat, come back to the point, the question I asked you. You said that if I sold you a car and then I said, "By the way, I'm taking out the back seats," that you uh, would be really outraged by that and that wasn't part of yeah. the deal and so on but the question i'm asking is of course of course the eu are outraged of course the south is pissed off uh of course any number of people are cheesed off but the question is should the eu take legal action yeah I, or should they try to persuade know. them well, what, what, to... Part, what part of me saying yes they should did you not understand <laughs> 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 Yeah. But is that the best course? I mean, if you if you take people to law, you're you're uh, are you not putting a term? Suppose you just take it down to the level you took it there, wherever I took yeah. out the seats of the car, right? And yeah. you take me to court, and I'm bloody well sued for bad faith or whatever, and I have to yeah. pay out. Uh, do you think I'll be your friend, or I'll I cooperate with you ever again? I don't, I don't give a monkey's after that. 
a few acting bad faith on two separate occasions. Yeah. Hey, Jude, there was a, 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 there's an un, I think the Irish Times, I, I need to go check it, but there's an unnamed EU official uh, who said, this is a big deal, th th because he said, this is twice they've done it. Uh, and the message for the EU is, if we can't trust them in this, Simon Coveney, by the way, got it right, he says, the, the clear message to the EU is, we've now got a partner that we can't trust. They sign a deal one day, and the next day, they totally undermine it and, and go in. And they, they've done it twice. They're going to break international law twice, and they've stated it publicly they're going to break. Jim, what message does that send to any outside party, third party, that uh, down the line that they're going to do a deal with uh, the British, uh, you know, this great global Britain that they're talking yeah. about uh, outside the EU? Yeah. Uh, like, I wouldn't trust them. Yeah, I think, again, uh, that uh, expression I used with regard to Diane Dodds, self-inflicted wounds. I think this yeah. is a self-inflicted wound because, as you say, the rest of the world is going to look at this and say, geez, see these guys, they make agreements, and then yeah. they turn around and they break them, and they, they don't seem to see any problem with that. Um, I would agree with you, actually, Pat. Uh, you know, I think, I, compared to drunk driving, yeah. you know, you know somebody who goes in for drunk driving, they go and get have a few jars or maybe more than a few jars and then they get into the car and i'm a local mm. cop and the first time i this guy is a bit over the limit i say to him listen you're breaking the law uh you know this is ridiculous and i give him a turn off and he goes off and then the next time he comes mm. and he's three times over the limit yeah i would apply a full pre the only thing i convince that guy is full pressure of the law you know, yeah. he'll know that if I drink and drive, I'm going to pay for that. I might even be sent yeah. to prison. I certainly will be mm. fined very heavily. I would say the same thing applies with regard to Britain or the UK. Yeah. The only thing that they will respond to is not sweet talk, is not reasonable yeah. negotiation. It is penalties. And yeah. really, in the end, you know, politics is about power. And I think yeah. the EU should exert all possible power on this uh, and you'll not get Britain to act uh, in a normal way except you do that they will interpret reasonableness as weakness what yeah. do you think Jude if you saw I agree totally if you saw hey Jude it's not my opinion watch Branton Lewis who's on the view last night <laughs> and, and uh, talk about oily uh, and whatever um, he basically tried to say this is a technical move and there's no big deal and all the rest of it Jude they broke an agreement they, they acted unilaterally twice, and that's not in the deal, and it's not part of the agreement. And, you know, uh, 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 and they turn around and sort of uh, basically do this, and then turn around and sort of say, this is only technical. It's because there's difficulties with goods coming in. Jude, by the way, that's grossly, grossly exaggerated. I'm uh, going to ask you that, know, you, yeah. Is, it, uh, is that exaggerated? Yeah. Is there I, a real problem? Question. Hey, Jude, Jude, there's a friend of both of ours that a wee bit of investigation, I'll not name him publicly, and he said you could get any uh, any stuff for the tomorrow, mor tomorrow morning if you wanted an ulcer fry in any shop. You know, like using that as a sample, you could get your sausages, your bacon, your eggs, your anything you wanted, your bread. So he said this thing, there's massive uh, sort of uh, problems with getting supplies. It's rubbish. It's grossly overplayed. Jude, I regard what uh, uh, Lewis and the British government have done as a sop to the DUP and to keep the hardline Brexiters in place who are, you know, the European research group who are getting on side. I think these are the people that uh, they're sort of pulling the strings a lot back in, in Westminster with, with the old hard line, uh, you know, and Boris is, I think, nearly part of that group. So I, I think that's really the background that's going on here. Uh, they're keeping they're keeping the, the, the you know, Bill Cashes and that we gave uh, the French name. Uh, they're keeping all them on, on board and sort of th throwing them a bit of raw meat. Do, don't they see themselves, though, that that's going to get them into really bad, they'll have a terrible international reputation? I mean, yeah, for Perfidious Albion is, a, you know, something that's been going on for a long time. But to have this happens right now, I mean, when they're, for example, trying to do a trade deal with the US, where you have Joe Biden, who's made it very clear yeah. that he's got a very uh, sharp eye on what's happening in Ireland. Don't they yeah. see that that's going to be self-damaging? Do they care? Jude, I, I think, I straight up, I think, you know, I get referred to it, but it may as well. I think there's a certain sort of, remember Trump, you know, this sort of 
uh, absolutely shake everything up. Don't uh, forget about the old conventions and norms, and we'll just do whatever the hell we want, whatever way we want. I think Boris, uh, as a sort of mini me, it, the, the, I think they must have got the same ideology from you know Dominic uh, Cummings and uh, what he called the guy, uh, the fat guy that was on at the start over in America, Bannon, Steve Bannon. You know this sort of. Uh, we, we, we're disruptors. We're here to make everything. You know, the old conventions, you know, are no longer applicable. Applicable. You know, be dishonest, be immoral. Whatever the bottom line is, whatever works for us. To hell with conventions and moralities and you know con conscience. You know, the end justifies the means. Yeah. Was, wasn't it? Wasn't it El Principe? The, what do you call? What do you call the guy that the Italian uh, wrote in the fifteenth century? Machiavelli. Machia Machiavellian politics uh, is now in full swing. <laughs> By the way, Pat, I, mean, this, I know this is only incidental, I agree with what you say, but uh, you do realise that you have referred to a person as being fat on this broadcast. Who did I refer to being fat? Steve Bannon. <laughs> well, he's a he, speaking as a fun person myself, I'm not going to get too worried about that. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> he, he also doesn't shave. Anyway, yeah. uh, final story this morning, Irish Times once again, only this time yeah. it is, and I was kind of amazed by this, it was one of their editorials the other day, and it is, it says, Irish Times view on the restless, restless uh, state of unionism, and it says Arlene Foster and the DUP leadership are struggling to plot a path forward, yeah. uh, and they then go on to essentially say that the uh, many in unionism are anti-scientific, uh, and into pop populism, anti-lockdown yeah. mentality, uh, resentment of Stormont's power sharing, mistrust of Westminster and Dublin, Sammy Wilson referring to the need to wage guerrilla warfare against the protocol, and calling Health Minister Robin Swan a poodle. They, I, I, I'm not, all of those things are absolutely true, and you and I would probably have known about them already. Yeah. But for the Irish Times to put that into an editorial, that does seem to be something. Well, I've never seen that before. I really have never yeah. seen an editorial like that. You, you know, uh, neither have I. I. I would presume. Um, uh, you know, probably Jerry Moriarty is there in Northern Editor, and I actually know Jerry from way years back. Uh, I, I'm, I might be wrong, but I, I, I might detect a bit of his hand in that. Jude, you can also throw in the one that the uh, the Agriculture Minister. Uh, last week stopped inspections at the port and told the staff to, you know, you can also throw in the fact that the um, the DUP mayor, mayor of Larne ordered the, the customs staff there to withdraw because of threats by a guy with a spray can. The police said there was no threat they could detect whatsoever. So uh, unionism seems to be in some sort of uh, churn or turmoil. And the DUP seem to be scrambling ahead. But you, you know something, and I keep referring to this as well, but this, you may as well refer to it because... Arlene Foster, the leader of unionism, went to a meeting with loyalist paramilitaries, illegal paramilitaries. That's a fact, you know, it's not your opinion, my opinion, it's a fact. And there was a statement issued afterwards. And I am sitting waiting for the Dublin government or somebody else to, can you imagine if Michelle O'Neill had gone along to the meeting of the ANLA, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the continuity IRA, uh, dissident IRA groups, and issued a statement saying afterwards, I were not threatening violence, but, you know, the unionism went along to that meeting to state very clearly, hey, we're going down the constitutional path. But if you're going along to meet these people, what's the message you're sending out? You know, it's very clear. The, the hypocrisy of that is, well, look, hey, wait a minute, we're saying we're going constitutional, but just want to let you know that the loyalist uh, paramilitaries are still there. That's the well, message yeah. they want to send out. Yeah, total agreement, total agreement. Uh, in fact, yesterday uh, on the UTV News, uh, Rose Neal was reading the news and uh, she started a sentence which ran something like, uh, today, uh, loyalist paramilitaries told the prime minister that something or another. Mm -hmm. And I tweeted it because I said, aren't the loyalist paramilitaries illegal? Yeah. And they're issuing statements telling the Prime Minister of the Great Britain uh, you know, yeah. what, what the position is? 23 yeah. years after the signing of the Good Friday Agreement, they're sending uh, uh, a letter to the British Prime Minister saying they're withdrawing their agreement, or support for the Good Friday Agreement. Mm -hmm. A loyalist group that's illegal who shouldn't be communicating with the Prime Minister. 
And are they th are they threatening? We see earlier you said that the uh, they found that there wasn't a threat at Larnport to the workers and so on. No, no, Is uh, 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 no. I am I am saying this. this it's all optics. Basically, what they're saying is, look, hey, yeah, uh, I think the DEP are playing a very dangerous game here. They go along and meet loyalist paramilitaries, and they're basically trying to say, look, there's no threat of violence. Well, why did you go and meet the loyalist paramilitary if there's no threat of violence? And what's what's the point of that? It's sending out a not very subtle, subliminal message, you know. Well, which is? Which is the threat of violence. Do you think that's a real threat? I absolutely. Now, by the way, it's not, I, I don't think it's going to happen to Darren Moore. It might not even happen for five years. But what the message is, if you go and try to change anything, that this is down the track. Well, then how does that square with the police saying that there really wasn't any threat to those workers up in Lauren? No, I, Jude, I, I'm saying they're sending out the message. See if anything does concrete try to... Jude, this is a protocol which is to do with goods coming to Northern Ireland. It hasn't changed the constitutional position. See tomorrow morning, there's a border pool. The, the, the optics become real. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I agree, actually. Uh, and I'm sort of just uh, putting the devil's advocate point of view. But, yeah. I, you know, the fact of the matter is that it's all very well to say that this is purely a matter of trade and stuff yeah. coming from Britain to Northern Ireland or Northeast Ireland, Eastern Ireland to be exact. Um, yeah. I think it's more than that. I know it's more than that. You know it's more than that, Pat. And the DUP know it's more than yeah, that. Yeah, Jude, I, of course I do. But until such times, there's a border poll and, uh, what, uh, and the, uh, the people of Northern Ireland vote to go into United Ireland. The constitutional position hasn't changed. Uh, and the, the other thing as well, I heard our most ridiculous argument on the other night um, with some DUP. They said, the people, I think it was Arlene Foster said, the people of Scotland and Wales don't have this issue. The real, the reason the people of Scotland and Wales don't have this issue, they don't have a land border with the EU. We, on the island of Ireland, we do. Uh, 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 I think, <laughs> well, I, I, I have a lot of sympathy in some ways for unionism at, at the present moment, because when they say that they're complaining about this uh, being cut off from the mainland, as they would say, yeah. they're dead, right? They are being yeah. cut off economically. And when they have yeah. scrawled up on walls, things like no economic United Ireland, yeah, they're dead, right? It is economic United Ireland. And the I, more do, I, I, do, I know, hold on. I, let, let's go back a wee minute. And you, I, I, I think people are letting it. Jude, three years ago, four years ago, before Brexit, there was no none of this problem. It wasn't the protocols. The DEP are trying to say it's the protocols problem, not Brexit. We didn't have this problem four years ago. Along comes Brexit, and we now have this problem. So, like, and who supported Brexit? The DUP. Who ignored the Walshers of 40 or 56 percent of the people? The DUP. Who rejected Theresa May's deal that wouldn't have uh, the, the DUP? So, like, and I say, I heard, I've heard Arlene, I've heard Sammy Wilson, I've heard everyone trying to say it's not our fault, it's those other guys' fault. The people who brought in the hard Brexit. Are the people and who people who voted for Brexit are the people responsible for what we're going through now? Yeah, I I agree with that too. Uh, but maybe you know maybe it's like getting married, and then suddenly realizing that the person you married isn't quite <laughs> the kind of person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Uh, so you know they're all for Brexit, and now they suddenly see, oh my God, look at what's happened. I, I know, but you, I, you know, it's the scramble to blame others that I, it's very undignified. You know, it's, it's everybody. And, and this, this sort of disingenuousness that I heard Arlene Foster, and there was a press conference yesterday where somebody suggested here this was, she said, no, oh, no, this is nothing to do with the DUP. And we do, you know, uh, we want trade and we want all this sort of, Arlene, you messed up, the DUP messed up, and karma has come back to bite your backside big time. It's very irritating, I agree with you again. <laughs> You're a very wise man, Pat. So obviously, if I agree with you, it must be wise. But uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um, are you sorry? I mean, most of most nationalists and Republicans tend to be a bit indignant when they hear these kind of things, like Sammy talking about guerrilla warfare, uh, the yeah. saber rattling with uh, loyalist paramilitaries, and so yeah. on. Um, do you uh, regret that they do this? Do you regret to hear yeah. Sammy talking this way? Do you regret to hear Arlene talking about uh, yeah. it being purely an economic matter? Or? Yeah, look, hey, 
Do you regret it? I'd rather they didn't. Would you? Would you? I, 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 I would. I would, I, I, would I, 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 hold on. Jesus, give us a break here. What's <laughs> it the other way around? Ted was a nationalist coming out with that sort of stuff to unionists all the time. Say that Michelle O'Neill was going down and saying, oh, I must go and talk to the distance and I must go on a, and then get my photograph taken or saying, you know, you know all this sort of stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, the Dublin government has bent over backwards, almost ignoring the wishes of the nationalist people to keep unionists on board. The D are the... <laughs> The like the Tories are doing the same. Branton Lewis has gone out in the limb for them just to keep them happy on this one. The British government has twice now broken an international agreement. You know the wishes of uh, a lot of people in Northern Ireland being ignored to keep the uh, unionists happy, but they, they they don't ever seem to be happy. They're okay. I accept that, that the tide is running against them in terms of dem uh, dem uh, demographics and so on. But hey, Jude, you know uh, it was a very strange deal. They, it was made in 1921 anyway. It was. An artificially created state. You, you know, <laughs> they must have known somewhere. I, but it's, it's, that's not a political statement. That's a f they uh -huh. counted how many Catholics they had and how many Protestants they had. It was never a natural fit. It was an artificially created oh, state, yeah. and that's fact. <clears throat> that's not having a good uh, the Protestant people or the yeah. Unionist people. But I'd come back to your uh, the point you made. Uh, if uh, Michelle O'Neill was to go and consult with distant Republicans and so on, that there'd be yeah. all hell to play. Um, ah. And I agree with you. It would be. And the result would be that Republicanism would be damaged. Yeah. Likewise, when Arlene and Sammy and so on keep making these daft statements, keep pushing for these arrogant kind of uh, controls about well, they want to have the cake and eat it, etc. Yeah. I think they're I know they're damaging unionism. And yeah. as a nationalist, I'm glad to see that. Yeah, I'm quite honest. I'm I, glad to see I, it. Well, I, well, that's a different I'd way. Rather of it, but, no. I'd rather they were reasonable and my friend. But if they're not going to yeah. be my friend, damage yourself as much as you want to be my guest. Yeah. No, but, you know, well, I, I have, you, you know, over the years, I, I know quite a few unionists, and, and I have to be honest, most of them are the salt of the earth, decent people. Now, I, I'm not talking individual, but see the policies of the DUP, you know, it's like saying uh, what I call I, I've met many Americans were lovely people. But if you're asking me, do I like the Trump administration? You've got to be kidding. <laughs> well, the, the same applies. Most of the unions I've ever met have been the salt of the But see, unionism as a concept or as a, an ideology, it's, it's not a nice ideology. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. And again, I would, I'd reiterate that uh, uh, by saying these things, they are damaging the very thing they claim to be representing and, and hold yeah. precious, which yeah. is grand, which is grand. Yeah. So it's very yeah. mixed up all world. And some people yeah. have one point of view and other people have another point of view. Ah, God but, bless them. Uh, yeah. There is a three word Irish phrase, which I can't remember, but it's something about one day we'll be happy. This is Chucky Erla. Okay, Pat, you've done very okay, well this morning. Jim. Okay, have a date for the weekend. Have a good time. Uh, and you. <laughs>